Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation and any other New England Patriot faithful that happen to be watching this right now, what I meant to say was um, we are in the third part of our three-part series examining the teams in the AFC East that the Buffalo Bills have to take on six times this year. And going to try to see, if you watch the first two episodes, did those teams equip their team enough to beat the Buffalo Bills and to throw them as the AFC East champions? We have gone through Miami and um, the New York Jets. Obviously, we did not save the best for last. We are going to be talking about the New England Patriots today. But before we do that, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. You can find all of our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, all of our episodes will be going to iTunes and Spotify as well. Guys, I know this is going to be like hitting off a tee, and I, I, I'm here for it. I mean, how else do you explain a team that was 11th defensively in scoring last year and not using an offensive draft pick until the fourth round? Yep. Uh, by the way, Patri- Patriot, Patriots, Patriot fans, since you guys are here, uh, you had 12 rushing touchdowns last year. Well, three of those are on the Bills currently. So have fun with that. Joe and Paul always uh, always helping me out here. Guys, the New England Patriots, 8-9 and nine last season. Are they headed for the, the same result this year, even though not many changes have happened on their team in, in the draft in this offseason? You know, I I'm just excited to hear that that Bill is gaslighting the quarterback controversy between Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones. So I will take all of that smoke, right? Like I'll take I'll take all of that. How dare you spit on a good name of Trace McSorley? You just just put that right in my veins, <laughs> right in my veins. Well, listen, the fact that Matt Patricia, Matt Patricia was their offensive coordinator last year. I mean, it can only go up from there, you would think. But then they signed Bill O'Brien, and you're like, wait, actually, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't go up from here because Bill O'Brien didn't didn't exactly have a great offensive resume when he left Houston. You got to think Bill is sabotaging this team. You really do. Like, like, at first, it's like, this is a joke. He's not really. Wait, is, 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 wait, no, he is. He is absolutely sabotaging this team. He's still ticked off about the Brady thing, and that's okay by me. Just like Paul said, put it in my veins. I'm all right watching this team struggle for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, but good on them. James Robinson is one hell of a running back. He's a great weapon. Ramondre Stevenson was a really great find for them last season. You know, they're thinking they could lose Damian Harris, who I thought was probably their best running back through when healthy right asterisk when healthy but when finding healthy. a healthy running back for the patriots is hard when you have a wide receiver group that's kendrick Bourne, uh trey nixon uh they just cut nelson aguilar finally right like it's they it's, got juju now they got juju now they got juju. oh yeah now yeah got juju right but they lost jacoby myers who was probably their best receiver Right, Jacoby Myers was easily the best receiver, and probably yes. better than Juju, by the way. And yeah, and I agree, yeah, and I agree. But I mean, you know, Juju made the smart business decision: go to KC, establish value. Right, like that was smart business decision by Juju. Yeah, they're get, they're getting the band back together. Obviously, Trent Brown came back last year. Um, they got Juju Kendrick Bourne and Devontae Parker, which on paper it doesn't seem bad. They got a lot of speed. And they got a possession receiver and Juju to go over the middle for them. Obviously, they still have Cole Strange. Big pickup for them. Uh, you got uh, the addition of Mike Gusecki as well to go with Hen- uh, Hunter Henry. I guess we're just going to do this again. We're just going to have two wide, two tight ends you know, come in. I mean, how many – come on. Hunter Henry and uh, who was it that they had just had? It was uh, – Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith. They, yeah. I don't think they combined for 60 receptions in any season that they played together. <laughs> well, look who's throwing him the ball, Paul. Yeah, he's still throwing the ball, though. That's the problem. He is still yeah. throwing the ball. I really <laughs> think, though, so if we could be serious for a second, I think the you know, uh, Joe kind of downplayed a little bit, but Bill O'Brien, certain guys have certain roles. Certain guys can be head coaches at some point. Certain guys are just better as coordinators. I think we would be hypocrites if we didn't, extol that fact that, the, that Leslie Frazier is a better defensive coordinator than he was a head coach in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. 
I think I think we can agree on that at least in principle. But Bill O'Brien being an offensive coordinator, working under Bill, it's something that he knows. It's not like a new situation for him. It's not a situation where he's going to be, you know, you just can just take care of the ball, run the ball, and my defense will do the rest. I mean, Bill is really taking it back to the you know the mid two thousands with this approach. Mm-hmm. And I know if you guys want to call us hypocrites with, well, the Bills drafted Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, he is very similar to Mike Gusecki in some ways. However, the Bills have, uh, you know, they've thrown to their tight ends in the past. They've had a quarterback that will throw to their tight end in the past. I mean, the New England Patriots haven't shown anything else. So I think if we wanted to talk about their defense, Christian Gonzalez, hell of a corner, Keon White, that's a heck of a pickup. Um, you look at their back end. I mean, they got Christian Gonzalez, Kyle Duggar, Adrian Phillips, and uh, Jack Jones. Mm-hmm. They also have Jalen Mills and Jabril Peppers there. They have the the makings and and the, and the recipe there to have a very unique defensive set that would confuse younger quarterbacks. Now, mm-hmm. when it comes to the more veteran guys, I don't think it's going to con- really confuse them that much. So. Joe, what's your take on the defensive side of the ball for the New England Patriots? And that, I think, um, especially when it comes to their drafts, I think the New England Patriots had a sneaky good uh, draft this year, especially getting Gonzalez where they got him. I didn't think he would drop that far. But my problem with New England's draft was they pretty much went all defense, or at least early, in the early rounds, went all defense when your issue wasn't on defense. We know your defense is going to be above mediocre. We just talked about – the Jets and how we know they're going to be a well-coached defense. Well, for the most part, when you're talking about Bill Belichick, you know you're going to play against a well-coached defense. Unless it's the wild card round of the playoffs, in which case we'll just throw perfection their way. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, did that hurt? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Does that hurt? I just The dagger. <laughs> but no, in, in all seriousness, like we have a pretty good idea we're going to play against a good defense most of the time. And so I, I've, I've always respected New England's defense, what they can do. Um, but you, you wonder if you know Bill Belichick is still running a early 20, 2015 type defense and you know the league's moved on from that. And that might be where his issue is. Um, right. But no, I, I think this defense is, is still a solid defense and it's going to be a solid defense, but they're not, again, your defense can only do so much for you. And I think sometimes when you have the counterintuitive offense, it could be effective at times, right? Yeah. I think that's sort of what you saw when Brady was still there was New England would go out and throw the ball 45 times for two consecutive games. And then they throw the ball 12 times and run it 76 times the following game, right? Mm-hmm. But, it, but that's, that was, it was matchup football, right? right? Like it seemed like they were always a step ahead and doing the exact opposite of what a team prepared for. And ever since they figured out that there are like cameras everywhere that, you know, now that people are on in new England there, don't you, isn't it funny how that just kind of dried up, right? <laughs> like it's the same boring, just uh, like tech mobile offense every week. Right. It's, but, but I think that that shows the, the uh the relationship of what it means to have coordinators dialed into the game and, and i can't say that new england's done a good job there right mm-hmm. where they've had coordinators who aren't super dialed in the, in to the game like josh mcdaniels has been just a straight disaster as a head coach matt mm-hmm. patricia again was straight disaster as a head coach bill o'brien completely tanked a whole franchise for multiple seasons um you know like it, they've had they've had folks who have been disastrous for other organizations, right? So as far as contributors for yours, are they really strong there? But going back to the draft, I heard you say, Joe, that you thought they had a, a sneaky good draft. Mm-hmm. This is where I think Bill uh, Belichick kneecaps good drafts, right? Mm-hmm. In the third round, he drafts a linebacker from Sacramento State. In the fourth mm-hmm. round, he drafts a center from Troy. In the fifth round, or in the fourth round, he drafts a kicker from Maryland. Uh, he drafts a guard from Eastern Michigan in the fourth. Uh, he does take a couple players from colleges that people have actually seen on television. <laughs> um, and then I don't know if you guys have seen the picture of Bryce Beringer, the punter they drafted in the sixth round. Mm-hmm. But you need to see the picture of him, the stock photo of him. You have to see this. I mean, and, and you do have to have an issue with someone who drafts. <laughs> 
Yeah. Who drafts Fuck a kicker that. and a punter in the same draft? That's an Wait, issue. Hold on, Mario. Let me show you the one that. Let me show you the one that I got. Is that the football equivalent of Rick Vaughn? <laughs> That's what the. So yeah, you see, yeah. Hey, I love it. Right here, here you go. Ready? What the f- <laughs> is this? He this looks like a coach a already. Like he's just an like NFL a... player. He is a professional athlete. <laughs> He looks like a biology teacher. That guy literally has to stay 500 yards from every school and play now. <laughs> that yeah. guy looks like he's on his third year of coaching defensive backs. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> he looks like he looks like he just sent the text message like, I don't care what our problems are, Karen. I just want to see the kids. <laughs> Or park him that up. Beck's the hitter. I walk him. <laughs> Tom Selleck's gonna gonna sue him for copyright infringement. But it's but it's that stuff that knee capture that knee capture organizations, right? Because Bill has a tendency to people talk. Oh, you know, Belichick always finds these kids from these small colleges, and it seems like that's just like it's excusable when they're fourth and fifth round picks that you could just cut these guys over and over and over again because mm-hmm. it just flies under the radar. You're like, oh, it was a chance anyway. But you can't kneecap your draft doing stuff like that. And that's 100% what Belichick is doing when you take a string of players at at rounds that you have to hit. Like, the Patriots are not in a position to miss on draft picks, like, especially half the class. And you can't be drafting guys like that. I mean, they drafted Isaiah Bolden in the seventh round. Mm-hmm. cornerback and from he, Jack, he, from, Jack, from Jackson State from he's Jackson gonna walk State. into camp and go you drafted this guy before me <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you knew I was gonna be there <laughs> what the what what the, now listen okay all right back to you know some some of Paul some of Paul's points on there hmm. Belichick for years this is nothing new he has been more content because they had a winning franchise for a number of years. He was so content on trading out of the first round or giving up his first and second to get mm-hmm. more. He likes volume. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see how what I could sort through what I can get. Let me get some guys with maybe some chips on the shoulder. Let me get some guys who are want to be the part of the Patriot way and all that stuff. As far as the coaching staff goes, Belichick is known for teaching you everything you know, not everything he knows. That's why a lot of these coaches happen to flame out wherever they go. Now, if you look at the team itself, you got the you got Belichick, you got O'Brien, you got his his son and Gerard Mayo. So you don't have any like 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 Paul or Joe said, you don't have any young minds coming in that are going to bring a new look mm-hmm. to this Patriot team. It's it's what Bill wants when he wants it. Mm-hmm. That being said, they're going to be like a sitcom that stayed a, stayed around for two three seasons longer than they should have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, that's what they're doing right now. They're playing. Okay. If everyone else is playing that type of football, if I play this, I'm unique. They're not used to planning against it. AKA they're not equipping their teams to beat a team like mine with a double tight end set, running the ball all the time and playing really hard nosed tough defense. Mm-hmm. That has been his mindset for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, long time ago, he was the coordinator that was on the cutting edge. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think we all here can agree Super Bowl 25 was not one of the Buffalo Bills' finest moments. That's mm-hmm. because he, he decided to put two defensive tackles and seven defensive backs on the field. Mm-hmm. He says, listen, if we're going to win this game, Thurman Thomas has to rush for 100 yards. And the whole defense was like, what? But he they did it. Mm-hmm. They ended up doing it. He was an innovative mind back in the time. But I think, I think Joe's right. He wants to sewer this team. And obviously, it's just an opinion here. New, New England Patriot fans, you can say all you want in the comments. Like we said last video, Paul does not care. Mm. Neither do we, by the way. Nope. Um, but you have to look at your team and it's like, okay, are you really equipping your team to make the playoffs with all of these directional university draft and Rick Vaughn? Or mm-hmm. what are you trying to do? Are you trying to compete in the East? Are you trying to get a higher draft pick for whoever um, – whoever Belichick wants to come in. Like, I I don't understand it. I really don't. Right. And, and, you know, I think everybody knew that the quarterback position was weak. Right. And I just think they're like, we're just going to wait this one out, man. Next year's draft class looks great to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's so sad 
to see organizations do that and kind of and drag a fan base along. But mm-hmm. like Amari, you went through the depth chart, right? Mm-hmm. Devontae Parker has no business being on an NFL roster right now, right? No. Like he's he's just torched, right? He's got no business being on an NFL roster. That's, that explains Tyquan Thornton, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in round. That's what I mean. Like it has a very major league feel to it. Right. Like <laughs> I, it does. Like, I know you made the joke sense. earlier, but the truth of the matter is yeah, it's got a pretty major league feel to it because they did not make great strides. They signed guys to one year deals. Uh, their offensive line is, is not great. Uh, you know, they're loading up on young prospects, right? Like it's, just, it's got a, it's got a very, you know, I, I got you an outfielder from the giants, you know, mm-hmm. like it's got a very similar feel to it. Yeah. Not what, those I'll, giants. what I'll say is this: We've done this series, and and I have to throw the Bills in there. We did. We talked about Miami. We talked about the Jets. We talked about. Uh, we we know obviously we talk about the Bills quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Number one, I don't think we've seen the ceiling of Josh Allen because he switched coordinators. He's with Dorsey now. He did put up an impressive impressive numbers, but it was like a one man show. It was like eighty five percent of the offense was Josh Allen. So you don't really know what is really in store for twenty twenty three. You have a, a kind of an inkling of what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Tua, there's a question marks about him. Can he stay healthy? We talked about it on that episode. Aaron Rodgers is going to a new team. New, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to be with Hackett, so he's going to have his system. He's going to be the one that's going to be most knowledgeable about it. But that takes time in order to develop. In the rookie season of Mac Jones, you saw the ceiling of the kid. You know exactly how he is going to perform at his highest level in the NFL right now. Of all the four teams in the AFC East, Mac Jones is probably. Number four, as far as quarterbacks, if you were ranking them, but the Patriots know exactly who they have in Mac Jones, mm-hmm. coming from um, coming from Saban and now with O'Brien. You know the, the continuity might be there for some games early on. You know we talked about mm-hmm. when you play teams early on in the schedule, sometimes they don't have a lot of their stuff adjusted. The the, the Patriots may sneak a few wins in there and be mm-hmm. like, oh, what's mm-hmm. going on here? And they do have a defense and a defensive mind, albeit maybe a few years behind, mm-hmm. that they have, you know, sometimes talent will trump the coaching. <laughs> and I think they have enough talent on the defensive side of the ball to be interesting. That's yeah, what I'll say. I just don't know if they're capable of scoring 14 points a game. I'm just going to be honest yeah. with you, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's a bad offense. And it's a dated offense. And again, there's there's some teams that aren't going to match up poorly against that. Buffalo's, you know, they they're not the stoutest on the interior, right? They can get mm-hmm. run over. But the fact of the matter is, it's a whole different game, and you know, they just can't throw the football. And they're here for another season of, I guess, we're just not going to throw the football. And as a fan, that would be incredibly frustrating to mm-hmm. uh, have season tickets or to sign up for this again because. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. While they had a, a good draft in some in, in some uh, premium positions, right with with premium draft picks, that's all that happened. They yeah. they did not do anything else to address any position of need, in my opinion, uh, through free agency. And the existing roster is just not good. Yeah, but it, if you take a look at this, and I'll ask Joe. Mac Jones played fourteen games last year. He had a 65% completion percentage, threw for 3,000 yards, and had a 1,000-yard rusher with what I think we can agree, and we joked about it earlier, with no offensive coordinator. Yeah. In the NFL, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. I mean, he, he, <laughs> Patricia's like sitting there and he's like, oh, wait, this is a defensive set. Hold on. <laughs> Got you, Mac. Hold on a second. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, mm-hmm. are you, what, are you, what are you really doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's the question? I'm confused. He said he had a question for me, and then he just threw up stats. I don't know what he said. <laughs> Great question, Mario. <laughs> so, is the question, so the question is, Joe, what are you doing? <laughs> this is great B-roll material. I'm going <laughs> to both of you. All right, so looking, Joe, looking at those stats, he was able to throw over 3,000 yards, 65% yeah. completion percentage. Does Mac Jones effectively improve in 2023 now actually having an offensive coordinator at the helm? No. No, because as Paul brought up, defenses just know how to play you. And, you you know, you can look at the numbers and say, oh, this number's better. You know, what matters in this league from a quarterback is can that quarterback put you in a position to win games? 
And Mac Jones just can't do that. You know, it, you, you think about a guy like going from Patricia to O'Brien. Yeah, O'Brien's the type of coordinator where he's going to he's gonna require you to get the ball out fast, right? Like that's what O'Brien, he's going to play a lot by action and he's going to have you get the ball out of your hands quick, which is great for Mac Jones because that's really all he can do, especially with this wide receiver and tight end court. You don't have to worry about getting beat deep, right? Most teams, like you just play them up front. You, you, know, you play them cover man and, you know, have your safeties behind you 10, 15 yards back. You really just don't have to worry about that. Um, between the lack of speed at the wide receiver position for this team and the lack of arm strength in, you know, in Jones. Like, so yes, he might look better when you look at the statistical sheet, but has he helped this team win? Can he, can he bring this team victory when the defense holds a team to 14 points? Can he say, I'm going to score 17? And like Paul said, where, how, when's that going to happen? And to me, that's the sign of a good quarterback and, and Mac Jones can't do that. And I'm sorry. That means right. that to me. Yeah, they, they scored 18 or less points in six games last year and went two and four. The, the fact that they actually won two of those is yeah. the impressive part about it. Yeah. You know, you're scoring under 20 points in the league where you they're the lighting up scoreboards all over the, the country. Mm-hmm. And the, and the, that for me, that's the thing. And, and all he did was reload that defense. Mm-hmm. So I think the defense is going to be a lot better. I think what they, what they thought they were getting in Mac Jones is a game manager. You know he's not going to win you games, but effectively, mm-hmm. if you if he's coached right, especially by Bill O'Brien, he's not going to necessarily lose you the games. He's not a guy that's going to you know drop thirty five on you in a, at a moment's notice. But I don't think he's going to lose a game for you if you have a lead, especially with that running attack that they have. So because I mean I'm maybe I'm a little bit higher on Ramondre Stevenson than a lot of, a lot of you guys are. I and like, like Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, as like, a like Paul back. said, James Robinson as a, as a spellback is really a really good thing to have Mm -hmm. so maybe that's maybe they're going to be playing a different type of football than everyone else and then that everyone's not equipping their team for Mm -hmm. because it looks like from the on paper this defense is equipped to play a lot of those defenses that throw 40 uh, those offenses that throw 40 times a game this offense looks like they're playing in 1976 Mm -hmm. so i'm not sure how that's gonna play out but we will see. It'll be fun to watch. Those are still sweeping them, though. Just let you guys know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to be close, man. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button before you leave. New England Patriot fans, uh, have fun with your six rings. Oh, wait. You didn't win any of those. <laughs> the team did. Okay. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. We are out of here. For Paul and Joe, see ya. <laughs>